everyone. Welcome back to Love Lessons in Marriage. We are diving right into part two today with our conversation with Martha and Ruben, married for 42 years. If you're not caught up yet, please go to part one in the description below to get caught up before watching this video. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Yeah. And how have you overcome those major conflicts in your marriage? Well, for me, I have always put God first. And I think it took me up to my, when I was 30, then I realized that um, it wasn't Reuben that was going to make me happy in life. Not my spouse, not man. Uh, and because I was always seeking for him to, to, you know, feeling alone and feeling whatever, devastated. I, then finally I realized it was God that was going to give me the peace. That's huge. And he did. And at 30, I turned around and said, okay, I'm going to, whatever happens, Lord, it's going to be me and, and my kids. And if Ruben wants to come along in this journey that I'm asking him, you know, this is the way it's going to be. If not, okay. But uh, he continued to struggle and, and we continue to forgive. And, and that was a big thing, forgive and uh, love each other. Mm. I hear that a lot from couples who've been together for a while. We even, we asked people and even around in church, you know, what's your secret? And so many of them said forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So many of them. That was like the one key thing we were like, remember that. The forgiveness and the pride. Mm -hmm. Humble. Yeah. Uh, forget the pride. It's out the door. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's really good. Forgiveness makes sense because, you know, the Bible makes this analogy of the church being married to God and God being the ultimate husband. And so our marriage should marry, our marriage should mirror that relationship to God. And what is our relationship to God? A lot of forgiveness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that relationship wouldn't exist if God isn't forgiving us. So uh, as you're saying that, and as you're calling a lot of couples, having told us that forgive, it, it just makes a lot of sense that forgiveness is, is, is key. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anything in particular you want to add to that, Ruben, about uh, overcoming major conflicts in your marriage, how you got over? Martha always told me that. She knew that if I stopped my addictions, she knew who I could be. Mm -hmm. She said, that, that's not who you are. I know who you really are. Mm -hmm. if, so if I wasn't into you know, my addiction, so that gave me hope, you know, it's like, you know, this is, this is not me, you know, and I didn't want them to go through the suffering and the pain, wow. but I also knew the, that, that what Martha said was really, it stuck to my brain. It's like, Ruben, this is not who you are. You know, your addiction is not who you are. Your identity is not, you know, doing the drugs or whatever you're doing. So that, that always gave me hope, you know, and when I'm, when I'm not under the influence, I, I'm a good guy, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving and right. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I love and I love my children and, and it's always, so that always gave me hope, you know, um, but you know, the enemy plays with you man sometimes or a lot, a lot of times, you know, it's like, you know, you've done this for so long and, um, but those obstacles, um, I always, I always, I sought help, you know, always regardless of, of um, how many times I failed, you know. Um, I believe God puts doctors and therapists, and, you know, in your life, in your path, so they can help you as well. But now, um, my the the main thing for me now, I think, as as we're getting older and are uh, heading downhill now, is to um. I shouldn't like that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I like that. <laughs> but you know what? It, it just it just means a lot to me to, to for them to say, you know what, Dad. We know we know you're a different person. We know that that's not who you are, and that that has really kept me going. You know that that has really kept me going because I can be the God. I mean, the man that God made me to be. You know, um, He didn't create me to be this person. You know, um, of course, there are choices in life that we make. You know, and I, and I made a lot of bad choices, but thanks be to God that this beautiful woman is still here for me, regardless. Because if if the if they were turned, the tables were turned, I think I would have gotten rid of her a long time ago. And I'm just being straight up. Yeah. If she would have done what I did to her, I would have been gone, you know? And I know that when I get to heaven, I'm gonna ask, I'm 
I'm going to tell God I knew um, who I knew who my guardian angel was here on earth, and it was my wife. Wow. Wow. That just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> wow. That's you. Beautiful. You actually said something, uh, you've said this to me more than once, mm -hmm. but you said it earlier today too. You said, uh, you asked her why she put up with you and why she married you. And, and what did you say she said? She said, because God put me, he knew that you needed me. He knew that I needed her. Mm -hmm. So, and I always question that, like, why God, why look at this poor woman suffering? But then when she told me that, it's just like, wow, man, that just, it really, went straight to the heart, you know? And for her to say something like that, to accept what has gone on in her life and, and to continue moving forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's definitely the rock of, of this relationship, you know? And I don't, I don't want my children or my wife to say, dad, how come you couldn't love us like we loved you? Mm -hmm. And I don't, want to, I don't want that to be my story at the end, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Wow, wow. That just took it a... Uh... I just took it full circle. We were joking about it's better to live in the corner of a house or in the desert. Than <laughs> but what you just said, that's what man said. But what God said is it's not good for man. Mm -hmm. to be alone. God said in Genesis, it is not good for man to be alone. I will give him someone to help him. And God put her in your life for that reason. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how beautiful to that Ruben appreciates you, Martha, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just mm -hmm. to have that that sort of gratitude and appreciation from your spouse is really beautiful as well. Yeah. 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 So thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much. Let's uh let's let's end it out with this this last few questions. And I just want to ask, what advice would you give your younger selves? If you are able to see you two, you know, graduating from high school, getting ready to get married or maybe just gotten married, what advice would you give your younger selves? For me, it would be to love her more each day because as time goes on, you, you kind of lose that. But that's what I would give myself is just love your wife more each day. And, and it's possible. You can love more and more and more. I don't know why when, when, people, when they're going out, boyfriend and girlfriend, everything's great, you love each other. And then once you get married and you spend time I don't understand why. I mean, and it doesn't have to be that way. That's what I mean. It, we have to find, there is a formula where I'm going to love her more than, than not. And so that, that's what I would do because then I knew that, I know that if I did that, then my thoughts wouldn't be on me. It wouldn't be on her, you know? So th that's what I would do um, is just to love her more each day and to tell her how important she is to me. Um, I, I did get married young and, and, um, I didn't have the opportunity to be a to be a bachelor, you know, or just to kind of go out. And, and I'm sorry, but she had to kind of hang in there until I did what I needed to do. But yeah, it's just so important. I think it's so important just to love, let her know that you love her more each day. That's what I would do. Uh, that's yeah. the advice I could give. That's great advice. I really like that. What about you, Martha? What would you give your younger self? Mm, I think I would have, um, even though I, I seek God early and like you know, at 30, I think I would have started <clears throat> even earlier to um, trust God and, and just give him all the burdens so I don't have to worry or, you know, yeah. and tell someone, tell a young bride to, to, to just uh, put him first mm. and, then, and then just trust God. Yeah. That's really good. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, we could all use more of that. <laughs> sure. 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 Yeah. For sure. Okay. And what advice would you give someone who is tempted to quit in their marriage? Mm -hmm. Well, I think if you start praying together, um, that would be very and, and, and worshiping together and asking God, really, should we be getting divorced and asking God to um, help you um, either change or you know because I think I think everything is possible with God in in mending someone's heart or mending your marriage and uh, I think it's sometimes even better to be married <clears throat> because 
when you get divorced, you have to separate everything. It's very costly. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it, so I remember Pastor Baro, uh, I forgot what Pastor told us. It's not that easy financially too. You have to look at that too. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but yeah, you know, of course, I think if you're being abused, um, you know, physically or mentally or so, you know, you should get separated. Yeah. But, but if you are, you know, going through some, you know, hatred or <laughs> I don't know what, yeah. sometimes that evil, evil spirits come in, just seek God first and together and put God in your relationship. And, and I, I think that would make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Have a relationship yourself with God. Yes. Bring it on. I, I like that too, because there are some couples who don't have some, their partner is not as spiritually connected as they mm -hmm. are. And mm -hmm. even, you know, like you said, just focusing on your relationship with God mm -hmm. is going to improve the marriage, right? Yes. And because, and just being your, doing what you're called to do. Yeah. Surrendering to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. Anything to add, Ruben, on that? What we would tell somebody who was tempted to quit? Mm, I think from what's, what comes to my mind is it's the grass is not always greener on the other side. You know, you're, you're in this relationship, you know, for good or for, or for worse. Um, and this is good. This is something that God united. You know, it's, we were, we're, we're meant to be together forever, you know? Um, so I think what I would do, I mean, as a male, I would, I think to myself, I would say, um, just, just hang in there, just hang in there, man, pray about it. Cause you know, there's times when a relationship is toxic and you shouldn't be, you know, I mean, let's just face it. You don't, you don't want to be in a toxic relationship, right? It's not, there's no happiness for either one, but you know, if you're married, just, I would, I would just suggest, man, just, just hang in there. Um, like we always say, man, give it to the Lord. Because I, I know that if Martha didn't have God in her life, I'd be gone. Mm. I know that for a fact. If, if, if you didn't have God, I, I would have been gone a long time ago. Mm. So I, I'm just so blessed, you know. And, and, and so that, that's, I mean, I would, I would say just hang in there, man. Because you can see, Martha could see past, past my, um, my weaknesses, you know. Uh, she saw my strengths when, when everybody else saw my weakness. Even the kids sometimes would say, Mom, you know, how much more could you handle? You know, how much more? But that's just, that's just who she is, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm really thankful. And, and I, I would say putting God first, asking him, you know, to help you. Mm. That's, what I, that's what I would, I would say if you want to keep the marriage like you, like you should. Uh-oh. Nice. I got something there, I'm sorry. Okay. That was, that was, that was rich. That was good. You've given us so much. Thank you so much for yeah. what you shared let me get out of here with this one last question i mean you gave us so much if you could just narrow it down what would be the one thing what would be the secret what has been the secret to your lasting marriage hmm. martha would you like to go first <laughs> <laughs> well i i know that god of course has been the for me the secret of our marriage but at the same time um Love. Mm. love and for me it's 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 love having a loving heart too loving each other um to since we were young you know so mm. wow makes sense first corinthians says love never fails mm -hmm. amen amen and for me i think it is um is knowing that I wouldn't be the man who I am today if, if she wasn't in my life. Mm. You know, wow. she, I wouldn't be the man I am today. And, and she's, still, she's still patient with me and she's still loving and, and she wants the best, you know? And that, that Proverbs nagging part, it's because they want the best. That's why they nag, because they want the best for us. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at it that way, you know? <laughs> That's too much. I, I don't no, think I you're that. good. I deserve that and more. Don't worry about it. Mm. Mm. I love that. Okay, so love. the cleaning part. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like you're, you're you're being a good husband over there too, Ruben, doing all mm -hmm. your <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing my best. Do your best, that's great. <laughs> well, thank you both. That's really rich advice and everything that you've said and all mm. of your learnings, I think is just so inspirational and the journey you've taken is inspiring and uh i love when you know i think we talked i don't know if it's the last interview i know we mentioned it maybe it was even offline we said you know we always see the happy ever, happily ever after uh when people meet in movies and fairy mm -hmm. they meet i meet the love of my life happily ever after you know the, the right. at the end but it's like that's actually when your relationship really begins mm -hmm. is when you start your journey together, married, and that's when you're going in that new direction that a lot of people aren't really guided on. Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, we learned how to find the one, but then after that, what happens? Right. And it's not always clean and pretty, and it's a lot of times messy, and and you know, there's a lot of ups and downs and struggle. But you know, I really, I really like hearing your commitment to each other and to mm -hmm. God, and going, okay, you know what, we're going to stick through this and stick mm -hmm. with it. And on the other on the other end, there's beauty and there's beauty for the ashes. Yeah, yeah. I really love that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for doing this for us, doing it for everyone that's watching. Um, we really appreciate. It. There was so much here that you guys gave us, and I know it took opening up and sharing and kind of pulling back the curtains and you know just admitting that everything has been perfect. But thank you for allowing us to see how God has uh, brought you through. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pray us out. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Father in heaven, for this amazing couple who has an amazing story of redemption and love that we had the chance to visit with. Thank you so much for seeing how you brought them through the valleys and back to the mountains. And thank you for how you've blessed their family with all the ups and the downs and struggles, four beautiful children, uh, two pastors in the mix, as well as another son and another beautiful daughter, three grandkids. Thank you for allowing us to see through them that there's redemption and there's hope. And no matter what we do, you are always able to Amen. bring uh, beauty out of our ashes. Amen. To bless them and keep them. Give them another 42. <laughs> Amen. Wow. <laughs> That was great. That was really great. Hmm. Yeah, I love the, you know, the the depths of their marriage, like the richness of it. I don't know how I, I just kind of see like so much texture mm -hmm. in their marriage, you know, of just this, they, they are clearly in love, like they are just so in love with each other. And yet, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, despite all these things that we've gone through and personal challenges and stuff, like like what Martha said is we're not going to let Satan win and mm -hmm. we're here, mm -hmm. you know, not and today, Satan, not today. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. And it's funny. They said, you know, back in the day, they got along with the joking and the sense of humor mm -hmm. and how they vibed. And that's still there today. And yeah. I love that they're, they haven't lost that. They haven't mm -hmm. lost themselves. They haven't lost having fun, even to the point where Ruben and I kind of got in this joke where he was saying, it says in Proverbs, it's better to, <laughs> live in the desert or live on the corner of a house, roof of a house, than with a nagging woman. And we laughed about that. However, it was clear that he was joking because the rest of the time, all he talked about was how much his wife has saved him and brought him back and how God has used his wife as the tool to redeem him. And he just lauded her with praise. And yeah. so, you know, to see him joking and saying that, but he made it super clear that she is the tool that God has used to bring him to where he is today. And mm -hmm. that was just amazing to see mm -hmm. that he sees his wife as that and the value that he has in her for that. Yeah, yeah. And her commitment <clears throat> to him um, as well, just saying, you know, it's love. They're really the secret to their to their marriage is love. And when you think about it, like you brought up First Corinthians, when you think about what love is in God's eyes, that is what it is. It's patient, it's kind, it's- Long suffering. Yeah. Bears all. Yeah. Rejoice is not an evil, but rejoices in good. We literally saw all of that listed out mm -hmm. in that story. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And I think that's just really inspiring. It's really inspiring for me. I, you know, I told them at the end of the interview offline that um, I want to save that for us for the future. I want to come back to that recording because, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to have a perfect relationship. There is no such thing. There's no such thing. We mm -hmm. will have 
our valleys and our trials and, yeah. you know, our things that we're going to go through. Um, and I want to remember these moments, you know, when you feel like, like what Martha said a couple of times, like, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And then going, okay, this is okay. Yeah, now mm. I know. Now mm. I know. Mm. And now we remember. Mm. And I think like our human selves are just like, have that capacity that tendency i should say to to go i'm not happy here what am i doing and satan really can work through and work on that and use that to divide and conquer and they were like nope mm -hmm. so i think it you know that, not that's not today satan, not today, satan. <laughs> <laughs> i love that and so it's just like having that as a reference point for later you know going hey let's mm -hmm. let's look at that at some point if we yeah. ever need it yeah yeah, yeah. and I hope that others can see that too. They can see that they're in a trial. Um, in fact, let me roll it back. When we were putting this together and we were approaching couples and asking them to do this, so we kind of started with a low minimum requirement. We wanted people married for at least 20 years who have some experience under their belt. And we were asking couples and a lot of people said, no, you know, you don't want to interview us. We're not perfect. We're not this, you know, we've had some stuff. We're not the couple you're looking for. And really that's what we were looking for because yeah. that's, everyone's like that. And, you know, none of these couples have had the perfect story, but they've had the perfect marriage because it's last and they've endured. And even what you said, you know, she got to the point where things got rough and she considered divorce and she said, nope. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, it's true. And I think, you know, also like that whole, um, like they got separated they, you know, another couple also went through separation mm -hmm. um, that we interviewed, um, Billy, Billy and Croquette. And, Croquette. Yes, right. and it's like, wow, okay, like that's a lot of people will not come back together after that. And the fact that they did, they made it through, that's uh, incredible. And I think that's a great testimony. Um, and mm -hmm. the whole underlying theme that we found through all these interviews is, is God. Yeah. And using prayer to really uh, keep your, your marriage intact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I, it, and on a little side note too, you know, there are a lot of couples like, you know, uh, like my parents, unfortunately, were not the best role models for marriage and love. And, and it's, it, I think a lot of people are like that. And it's very common. And it's hard to have anybody to look up to because, like I said, all we see is in the movies and then it's over. Mm -hmm. And you're like, mm -hmm. wait, what happened after they met? <laughs> like, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. What happened after they got married? We don't know. And so we're just kind of left our own devices to figure it out. But when we have other people that we can look up to that um, can help guide us through those challenging times that help it be real, like, hey, this is what it is, like what you think it is versus reality, you know, mm -hmm. those memes you see. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, everything's like, oh, Cinderella, but really it's like, the Cinderella scrubbing the floor before <laughs> yeah. she got the fairy godmother. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I think that um, that's really important to have people in your life who are other couples who've been there through it. They've been through it. They've stuck together. Mm. And to have those people in your lives to seek when you um, need that sort of guidance. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The power of prayer. And the power of nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, too much fun. <laughs> okay, okay. Next time you are in a disagreement with your spouse and things are boiling up, just, just break the ice, look at her and say, nope. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that. Not today, baby. Not today. Yeah. You guys at right each other's nerves. <laughs> and like things are so thick you can slice it. Just, just remember that. Look at her say, nope <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think to being real you know we we were just sharing this with martha and ruben that right before we started to do this series we were getting like super attacked by yes the, by the enemy trying to we were just fighting over nothing mm -hmm. i think we were we were arguing and then we even stopped and we we're like what are we even talking about mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't even know mm -hmm. it was just like back i don't yeah. even know what was going on and then it became apparent look at what we're getting ready to start look at the mm -hmm. series we're getting ready to start and we had immense out of like crazy out of nowhere and then it was like ah it makes sense that's yeah. what's going on and as soon as we were like <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not today Satan not today. We, we like came together in prayer and mm -hmm. it just everything just started to flow so that's true. you know I think there is definitely I think 
before we even started this learning about prayer being so important in people's marriages like we've already kind of seen a glimpse of that mm, we have which yeah is very cool yeah. yeah so cool yeah all right well until the next interview one left stay tuned one we left. got 50 years is it the next years? one is 50 the years one, yeah. 50. thank you so much for joining us in this journey with reuben and marta I hope that you got out of it as much as we did, and I hope it will be a blessing to you and your marriage, whether it's now or your future marriage. And if you did enjoy it, share it with someone that you know. Go ahead and send them that link. In the meantime, we've got another couple coming up who've been married for 50 years. So join us back again on Friday for another episode. See you soon.